Alex here with a high conflict child custody video on denial of access to medical care and I'm speaking specifically of your children's medical care and mainly I'm talking about the situation the very common situation where an ex just sets an appointment like a vision or a dental appointment medical appointment doesn't tell you about it goes to the appointment gets everything done for the kids or uh, more kid if there's just one and basically um, just keeps you out of the process um, doesn't let you participate by just not even telling you that it happened I, I, I've gotten a lot of requests for this video and the reason I haven't done it for so long is because I kinda feel like the answer is in all of my other videos really you read between the lines of all those other videos you kinda get the solution as to how to deal with this problem but because I keep getting a request I'm just gonna go in and grapple it just head-on and at least kind of drill, you know, drive it home as to what you, you know, how to deal with it. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can deal with this issue. And it really depends on how many times you've been in court and what language is in your court orders. If it's specifically in your court orders that your ex has to, you know, tell you when they're going to set an appointment so that you have an opportunity to appear and participate, then you can use the contempt of court mechanism. And I have another video on contempt of court that you can watch with a whole slew of other videos associated with it. If it's um, if it's not in a court order, you can basically go back to court and ask the judge to make an order so that going forward, if your ex doesn't comply with it, you can um, uh, you know hold them in contempt of court for violating that portion of the order. That's mainly what I did in my case. It happened three times in my case. Um, the very first time, my ex was just setting appointments without telling me. Filed a motion and the judge ordered that from now on she had to tell me so that I could show up. The uh, second time she uh, told me, but she gave me like no notice. Like one time she gave me like a day and I actually managed to show up. So she learned her lesson and um, next time she gave me 11 hours notice. And that time I couldn't make it. And I filed another motion and I said I'd like to have a specific order that gives me 14 days. And the judge granted it. And the third time, she claimed there was some emergencies twice in a row. It was just total nonsense. But anyway, um, after that third order, it ended up being used against my ex in a modification of physical custody hearing. And that was really the sweetest way to use it because I got physical custody. Um, which goes, which, you know, I can segue into my next, um, you know, option, which is you can use it. You can make a custody issue out of it. Um, in the physical custody sense, you can argue that your ex is failing to cooperate to meet the needs of your child. Um, it's a, it's not easy to do. The, I mean, the, the cheap way is to just say that it keeps coming up and you keep having to go to court. And it worked in my case. I call it the cheap way because I honestly feel like more analysis should be done on it than just saying my ex keeps doing this over and over again. I feel like the court should look in and see that... Um, in failing to cooperate, your child suffered some kind of harm connected to that. Not so much a parental rights issue that you have a right to be partic you know, participate, but uh, that you should point to some actual negative impact that it's had on the child. Um, in my case, I was able to argue that he um, suffered severe dental damage and decay. Um, and that was a whole separate thing the court went into when it found my ex to be guilty of dental neglect. But anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. The point I'm trying to make is you can make a custody issue out of it if it keeps coming up. You can show that your ex is not um, cooperating to meet the needs of the child. That in and of itself may not be enough. Hopefully you have other things that you can also bring to the table um, because modifying physical custody is incredibly difficult. And I have a whole video on that explaining not only um, my personal experience with it, where I did win, I did file a motion to modify and it was granted. But um, some of my research on it, my understanding as to why it's a very difficult thing to do and all of that. Um, the fourth and final thing you can try and do is a um, um, make a legal custody issue out of it. And I really didn't do that in my own case. I tried early on. Actually, no, wait, I did. You can... Um, there's two ways to make a legal custody issue out of it. The first is to generally modify legal custody. So just to basically ask the court to give you sole legal custody because your ex is just not capable of, um, you know, sharing in the, the right of, of the joint legal custody rights. And so the solution to that is kind of 
to just hit it as hard as you can with a hammer and just erase all of their legal custody rights. It's hard to do. It is possible. I did pull it off in my case. Um, but it was not based on being deprived access to my son's um, medical appointments and stuff. It was a communication issue way towards the end of my case. If you want to see how I modify legal custody, how I got sold legal custody, watch my video, Modifying Legal Custody. Um, kind of got on a tangent again, but anyway, what I was going to say was, you can ask the court, and this is also something that I did before I got sold legal custody, you can ask the court to split up the uh, legal custody rights. Um, it's kind of in the middle of uh, the, the solution of just seizing sole legal custody and just being done with your ex and um, asking the court to order your ex to do things that she's just not gonna do and that you're gonna have to bring her back for contempt of court issues on. <clears throat> By splitting up the legal custody rights, it kind of removes the conflict from the equation. Sadly, you have to give up your right to attend certain um, types of uh, appointments and such, but at least you have the right to set and and um, basically take over uh, the legal rights in the other area. One common um, way to split them up is to give one parent legal custody, decision-making authority over everything educational, and the other uh, parent legal custody over everything uh, medical. <clears throat> in my personal case, um, we split it up along the lines of I got the right to go to dental, um, dental medical, psychological appointments, and she got the right to go to vision appointments. So I was the one to, to set my, type my appointments and go to my appointments, and she was the one to set hers and go to hers. Um, actually, I'm glad that I brought that up because that actually is one of the greatest ways to cut down on conflict. If you have a, kind of, a high conflict ex, they will oppose this. Um, I actually tried it twice, failed the first time, but got it granted the second time with a different judge, and um, my ex opposed it both times. Um, so it, I mean, it's it's common for a high conflict ex to oppose anything that will reduce the conflict. So don't be surprised if your ex complains about A, B, and C, but then when you propose a solution that would work, they oppose it anyway because they realize that it's going to cut down on conflict and they need the conflict to continue. Um, in many other areas of my case, this happened, um, not just uh, legal custody issues, not just medical appointments and, and all of that. Um, <clears throat> That's basically everything that I have to say on the topic. I kind of want to go right back around to the beginning, and I just want to reiterate that, you know, the very first step is to make sure you get it put into a court order. It's so silly to have to say that because legal custody implies that both parents have a right to not just have a say in, but participate in those issues. But with certain people, um, especially high conflict people, they're trying to, they're not really trying to cooperate with you. They're trying to find loopholes and excuses as to how they can get away with frustrating your rights. And unfortunately, the way that they look at it is, well, sure, that's a general principle, but it's not in my court order, so I don't have to do it, and I'm not going to tell you, and I'm just going to set appointments. And oftentimes, um, just like happened in my case, when you get an order that um, sort of creates a boundary, they find a way to push that boundary even further to get go right up to the line again and frustrate your, right, your rights again just as like happened in my case uh, three times. Um, every time I got an order, she just found a new way to frustrate the previous order. It was a game. It's a game for these people. So anyway, um, I do want to reiterate that the first step might be to ask the court to enter a very specific order that says you have a right to go to appointments. Here's how much notice has to be provided. Um, sometimes you may want to have some kind of order allowing um, parents to alternate setting these appointment times. It's really embarrassing when parents have to go to this level to just set their kids' appointments. But as I mentioned, with the high conflict X, you have to do it because if the judge doesn't say it, you'll they'll find some new way to sort of manipulate uh, um, the way that they can sort of exploit, that's a better word, exploit the existing court orders to frustrate your rights and exercise their rights as obnoxiously as possible. Um, I do want to stress that ultimately, I'm not so sure that my approach of going back three times for the same issue was the best approach. Probably sooner rather than later, you want to make it a serious custody issue. Uh, maybe the first time it's a warning, you get an order, but when they start playing around a second time, I, I mean, at, at some point you have to start saying, it's time for me to get primary physical custody, it's time for me to get sole legal custody, it's time for me to, to split up these legal custody rights. 
don't wait as long as I did to take care of that. Bring it up right away. I do believe now, in hindsight, having looked back at the history of my case, that had I given my judge a more clear picture and a better explanation of what was going on, he may have been, and this is my first judge, he may have been more willing to um, accept my, my solution early on that these legal custody rights need to be split up because um, it's just it's a it, it's just a dream it's it's a delusion to think that this is just going to work out um, because one person wants there to be a conflict one person wants to play games with the court orders one person gets off on um, frustrating you and they don't care that it hurts the kids and they don't care about your parental rights and I think I could have probably painted that picture a lot sooner than I I did I waited a little too long and I I just want to stress that now maybe that's something that people here should consider doing. Um, a lot earlier on than I did. Uh, with that being said, don't be passive. Don't just let them get away with it because oftentimes if you do, later on when a custody hearing comes up, they'll claim something like, oh, my ex doesn't care about the kids because he doesn't get involved in any appointments. And I know that oftentimes people will say, well, I can just say she never told me about any of them and that's why I didn't go. But you know, at some point, it's gonna not, it's gonna look bad. Um, at least have some emails in there. If Even if you're afraid of court and you don't want to file any motions, at least have some emails or text messages insisting that you are not okay with what's going on and that you want to be involved so that at least you can rely on those if that comes up in court. But I have seen that happen before with where not only will the abuser basically ignore all of the victim parents' rights and just set all of the appointments and take care of the kids all on their, their medical, dental, and vision all on their own. But then, they'll later on, they had insult to injury by then pointing the victim parent out as a parent who doesn't want to be involved. When in reality, the parent is just frustrated and pissed off because he won't be allowed to be involved, and so he's just being passive. Don't be passive, because it will be used against you. Um, I really uh, am looking forward to hearing other examples from many other people here who have gone through um, a similar situation. Like I mentioned, I wasn't even going to do this video, but I kept getting requests for it over and over again. So I decided to just take it head on, do a video just dedicated on this topic. And <clears throat> uh, with that, I guess I'll go ahead and see you guys next time.